Hello everyone, it's Lee here. How are you all doing? I hope you're well. Welcome back to the channel for people that have been with me before for my videos and a great big hello to anyone who's new here today. Today I'm going to be painting from memory this, paint, this particular scene that's up on the screen now. I did this as a project, a final project in a painting course that I did a few years ago and um, I'm using a slightly different shaped canvas and I'm not going to be referring back to the original painting at all I'm just going to do it all from memory so it's not going to look quite the same but uh, I'm going to give it my best shot anyway so that's the colors that are up on the screen that I'm using and I'm going to start with the sky so I'm using a big two inch flat brush it's actually uh, from the hardware store this brush so it's a house painting brush so me and my camera weren't getting along very well today. Um, I forgot to change it to manual focusing. Yes, so <laughs> bear with me. It gets better once I get past the sky bit. Missed out on most of the clouds because of the focus issue. But what I'm using is a round hog hair bristle brush and I'm using those round movements to create the clouds. And because the paint is wet underneath, uh, it's blending in some places and making blue colors and in other places it's the white paint is showing so the next thing i paint in is the mountains and i paint them with a mixture of phthalo blue and crimson and a bit of white so the furthest mountains away from us are the lightest ones so they've got the most white in them the next ones coming forward have a little bit uh, more blue in them and then the closest ones to us have more blue and more crimson in them. So as they get closer to us, they become warmer and darker. And I'm using the same round brush that I used on the clouds. So I decided to make that mountain there a bit higher. I wanted it to go up into the sky a bit further. So then I added on this bit to the side just to give it a little bit more character. When this uh, first coat of paint had dried, I thought it looked a little bit patchy. So I went back and uh, put another coat over it. So you'll see that in the next transition. It's quite a bit darker than it was. I'm just cleaning my brush off at the bottom there. So this is how it looked after I'd applied the second coat. Using a round bristle brush, I'm going to be putting in the trees that are on top of the mountain. So basically what you're seeing is the sunlight hitting the top of the trees. And to get that shape, what I did was wet the brush and saturated it with paint, then squeezed out all the excess paint with a cloth and then just apply that greeny color again onto the tip of the brush and I'm using a dabbing motion to put the trees in down the mountain. So I want some of that purpley color to show through but I don't want any big patches of purple. So once I've finished I will go back and touch up some of the areas but you can see um, the way the, the paint goes on and it's a different color in different places because it's really hard to get the mix consistent every time you make a new batch it's a slightly different color so it, it makes makes it look like it's providing the contours of the mountain so that's just happening naturally so it's given the impression of valleys and peaks that brush is a little bit out of shape there so it wasn't working too well if you forget to squeeze the bristles with your cloth then the next time you go to put the paint on it, it uh, the shape of the trees is a bit wonky So I'm varying the way that I'm, the direction in which I'm laying those trees in 
just to create a little bit more interest and uh, more depth into the actual mountain. Some bits are lighter, which sort of gives the impression that the sun might be shining on those parts and other bits are in shadow. So you can go back and touch up some of the darker areas if, if there's too much of the purple showing through. Well, see, I didn't forget to squeeze the brush then and pull it into the chisel shape and that's what it did. It made those odd puffy looking shapes which I didn't want so I just wiped that paint off the brush, reloaded it again and painted over them. Canvas is a bit bouncy. If you find that your canvas is bouncing around a bit too much, you can um, stabilize it by just pushing gently on the canvas with your hand. It's a bit hard though if you've got wet paint all over the canvas. It's hard to find a place to put your hand where you're not going to put it in wet paint. Try not to make the rows of trees too uniform, break them up a bit so some trees look taller than others. Now I'm just putting some mist on the hill and what I did was I cleaned off the paintbrush, got all the colour out of it and gave it a good dry with a cloth and I've tapped it into just pure white and uh, um, now I've just I'm just tapping into the um, onto the hill with the with the white paint because that green is still wet. It is mixing with the white, but if you want it to be whiter, you just need to add more paint. And if it's too white, like it is there, you just keep tapping tapping it into the canvas until it uh, thins out. And I'm wiping my brush off with the cloth every every time I get new paint. Before I put the new paint on the brush, I'm giving it a, a good wipe out because it is picking up the green and I don't particularly want the, um, the mist to look green, especially not up the top there. Well, that paint was a little bit wet. My thumb stuck to the paint then. You'll see me now change to a smaller brush because I'm going to apply some mist to the area a little bit further back in the in the distance. So I want the the brush strokes to be a little bit smaller. So that was a completely dry brush. That one hadn't had any paint or water on it whatsoever. I just tapped the, the um, got some paint on to the very end of the bristles and tapped tapped on the mist 
and then worked it into the canvas. A little bit back there in that valley. Some of this is probably in, going to end up being covered over, but um, I'm still putting it in there because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put my trees, where they'll, how far they'll come up. And even if it is partially covered, it looks nice if you can see it appearing from behind the trees rather than looking like it's been put in afterwards. So I'd rather paint it in the first place and cover it over than to um, try and put it in afterwards. So now I'm going to paint the um, dark areas of my tree line. Um, that brush that I'm using is a little bit too soft. The bristles are too soft. So I'm going to change shortly to um, the house painting brush again, the two inch one. So on the edges of the canvas, this shadow area is going to be much higher because they're going to be the trees that are closest to, to me or to our site. So I've changed to that brush now, so the bigger one. Put stiffer bristles and it just puts the paint in a bit, uh, a bit easier to get the paint down. Let's see what I'm covering up some of that mist now. But um, some of it is still visible. So I'm going to come right across the canvas with this shadow colour and on the right hand side I'll take it right up uh, right up the side of the canvas and into I think it comes up above the skyline uh, the tree line on the on the hill. So this will be the shadow area of the trees and I'll be painting foliage over the top of this and tree trunks as well. And then I'll be painting some water. Well, that'll be the that'll be the first part of this painting. The end of that video of this video will be once I get this bit done. Uh, yeah, so there I've taken the tree line above the mountain on the right hand side. That paint's a bit wet there, you can see it's not, it's a bit murky, it's mixing with the green. And I do come back in a little bit later with, um, once it's dried a little bit, with another brush and uh, touch that up. So you can see I've touched that up now and I'm just a, with a mixture of blue and white, just roughly putting in some tree trunks and I'll take them all the way across. The ones on the sides will be bigger, taller, and I used a bigger brush because they're closest to us. You gotta be careful when you do these not to make them all the same thickness and the same shape, I mean, leaning in the same direction or, or the same distance apart. So I don't want them to be uniform, so quite haphazard. And they don't, you don't have to be careful when you do this, it's just um, slap it on. Most of it gets covered over with the foliage anyway. And we will be putting more tree trunks, defined trunks in, and branches in a bit later on. And that's a mixture of just um, white with a bit of blue in it that I'm doing that with. And hold the brush at the end, upside down and pull up to do those tree trunks. So we've got a bit of afternoon sun coming in on the painting so it was a good time to finish off. So that's what I've got so far and uh, it'll be nice and dry when I go back to uh, put the foliage in and I uh, we'll hope to see you in part two where I'll be painting in the tree foliage, the water and the riverbank. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.